Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case and welcome if you're currently in the live chat. I appreciate it. As we go along, you can share your own thoughts, opinions and responses to what's going to be talked about in today's video. And you can share additional information and talk about other stuff too. OK, so I've got a few questions here and it's to do with the LE, the law enforcement, the main police department involved, Box Elder County. Sure, the FBI are involved assisting on the sideline, but they aren't the main ones. It's Box Elder County. And today I want to do something kind of similar to what Sunshine did. Shout out to Sunshine for becoming a member on my channel. Appreciate it. She did a recent video listing key questions, as many as possible, which have not been answered yet within the case overall, which is a good thing to do. It can be helpful. It might be able to clear up dead ends, uh, link on to new leads and so on. I'm going to do that regarding the police today. OK, to try and understand the current situation and why it's gone that way. OK, so we've already previously covered the incompetence, the lack of professionalism, transparency um, and all of that when it comes to how they've treated the case and the family with information, investigations and so on. In recent time, obviously, the family have had enough. Friends have had enough as well as general public. And there's like a movement forwards to try and get the LE to step down so somebody else can take over. But as we heard recently, Box Elder County, the sheriff, deputy or whoever, doesn't want to. Wants to retain and keep going within the case. Some people could see that as a positive thing. Most may see it as a negative. And I want to, you know, ask some questions to you because you might have the answer to them. And if not that, just to start a discussion. So the overall question is, why are the police, Box Elder County, gatekeeping the case when, you know, other people could step in with better resources, better management and handling of the case? Could get the job done quicker, but that can't happen if the original Ellie aren't going to budge move. So, got some theories slash questions to ask, and we'll start off with the overall question: Are Box Elder County corrupt in some way or another? That's the question. You know, when it comes to police departments, certain areas within, you know, deep within, might not be as a whole, but certain parts and people, the odd uh, detective, officer, lower down, wherever, there can be corruptness, you know, it could be financial, it could be working with criminals, benefiting both ways, a bent copper, so someone who works for the law, on the law side, but also is caught up within like the criminal underworld and that. And those people who are caught in the middle, you know, for most part of it, they know what they're doing and they do it because they're benefiting both ways. They do their job, they get paid, they help assist, cover up something with criminal activity and org organisation or a certain individual specifically, and they get something in return. It's happened in the past. It's probably happening right now somewhere. No surprise. But the question is, is it directly happening within the Dylan Rounds case? That's what we've got to ask ourselves. You can leave your thoughts in the chat. What do you think? Do you think Box Elder County are corrupt in some way? So, got a few little sub bullet points to read off, okay? A Box Elder County, you know, wanting to gatekeep the case because they're covering for a certain suspect or multiple, let's say. You know, you've got Box Elder County, they come in, start investigating, 
the find bits of evidence maybe, which could be associated, linked with a key suspect like Jim Brenner, maybe Don, maybe Kurt Wadsworth or some of the Wadsworth brothers or Chase Fenstra. Few of them who have criminal backgrounds, who've been in prison, served time, been punished and maybe re-offended at a later point. So the police may know them fairly well. Are any of them friends with the police though? Are any, are any of the suspects or key people caught, caught up in the case, have they ever worked, assisted, cooperated with Box Elder County for the wrong reasons in the past? You know, whether it be covering for a murder, uh, turning a blind eye away from something, letting something happen, distributing firearms or distributing drugs and certain officers, policemen receiving money, benefiting in some way, or maybe even, you know, the likes of the department receiving protection, some kind of immunity within the area. You know, kind of like a hierarchy, if you've got rough, dangerous criminals out in Montello, Lucin, the outer skirts, and they say, hey, we'll cut a deal. If you do this for us, you don't arrest us, you turn a blind eye, we will protect you whenever there's danger knocking at your door. Our group, our boys will look out for you. They strike a deal and negotiate. And with that long-term agreement, maybe in the past, it's just to happen to get caught up within this case because those people, those criminals who made that deal back then may be responsible in some way or another within Dylan's disappearance. And the police are like, well, we can't do that much. We can't, you know, move in with force. We can't just, you know, get this person, grab that person because they are our friends or they are our contacts. So we can't, we can't do that to them because it breaks that agreement. It could backfire on us down the line regardless of what the general public may think in the family, you know, we've got other bigger threats that could kick off if we do things wrong. So that could explain maybe hesitancy, lack of communication, passing stuff on, kind of delaying things, dragging it out because they're like, oh, we don't want it to go down this route because it will end bad for us in some way. Or we want to be loyal to these criminals and suspects because they've benefited us in the past. So why why break that now? That would just ruin everything and it would all fall under. That's one way of looking at it because, you know, you can't deny within the Dylan Rounds case, just the area itself and the people that have been talked about, there's quite a few different criminals with similar patterns of criminal history, violence, outburst, unstable, firearms, drugs, burglary, all that. And with cer certain things within that, certain crimes and activity, the police can benefit or so uh, someone can, like distribution of firearms, um, the drugs. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if any of the firearms might have been passed on by Box Elder County. That's another aven avenue you could look at. I guess it depends what type of firearms they're, they're like police graded official ones or offhand black market type stuff. I'm not too sure about that. But you get the idea because, um, you know, if the police are there to solve the case, then that's what they should do. If they know they're not that competent or they know they're not doing that well, but they still want to, you know, hold on. It's like, you know, what, why are you trying to delay things? It's like, it's like you want things to be delayed. That's how it seems. So there must be a darker reason, a dodgy reason to why you're behaving like that. Okay. Another sub point could tie on from the covering for suspects is do Box Elder County know about Dylan's disappearance? You know, maybe even before the family reached out for help, you know, if the police know of certain suspects, they might have heard, they might have been told beforehand, prior, 
what was going to happen. Some criminals might have said, hey, we're going to go and take Dylan out, you know, make sure you don't arrest us, something like that. So with the police already being alert, then they're planning and aware how to go about things when it comes to solving a case. You know, it's like a general thing, if you don't want to do something, but you're still forced to do so, or you're obligated in some way, you're probably not going to put as much effort in or as much care. You might be a bit reckless, not that attention to detail, that lacking. And we've seen that lack within the police, how they've gone about investigating stuff, such as the boots, how they, how they delayed, you know, them for being taken to the labs. The near, like near Jim Brenner's trailer, you could argue they might be linked. You know, they've been put there or Brenner forgot to move them. The police could be aware of that. They see the blood on the, sh on the boots and thinking, oh, you know, this could directly tie to Jim immediately. So we need to drag things out to try and, you know, lessen the negative outcome on the suspect, such as Jim. So we'll say we're going to take these boots for lab testing, but in actual fact, we're not. We're going to drag it out to the point where maybe the evidence isn't as valid. We chucked them on the back of the truck. As Candice said, they just chucked them on the back, even though they were the main piece of evidence. So that, that lack of care and handling of the case does make you wonder and does highlight that it seems as if they don't want to be there. They don't want to be solving the case because they know something other people don't know. You know what I'm saying? And also the fact that they could have arrested Brenner right at the start and yet they delayed that as well. The police being aware of Jim and his past criminal history and yet just being so casual about it, you know, it makes you think maybe they do owe Jim in some way or they're tied with him. They've worked with him in the past because in most cases, if you know someone is dangerous and you've got the opportunity to apprehend them, to get them off the street, to make sure, to ensure that nobody else gets hurt, and as well with that knowledge of how they were in the past and dealing with them, then you would jump on it right away. And yet, Box Elder County didn't. So on top of evidence dragging that out, they dragged out the arrest of certain suspects. Um, the whole you know, incident with Chase Venstra, how they're saying, oh, he was never a part of the investigation to begin with. It makes you think maybe he was, but they might have treated it or turned it in a different way, slant it differently. So it doesn't look like the police are dismissing him completely, but they're still, you know, following the rules to an extent and the procedures so they don't stand out. And then... They're like, okay, you're clear, Chase. You know, what's done is done. Okay, gun charges. But in terms of done rounds, you're not tied with that. And then they say that to the general public and release it. So that's probably, that's one way. You know, they might have known Chase Venstra at one point. You never know. As said, the lack of competence by the police and how they've handled stuff, you can't help but think that they're delaying things that they're not being completely transparent is because they already have ties with certain suspects. So that's why I said, and that with possible knowledge of Dylan's outcome, whether it be beforehand or just after, maybe the police know who it really is, but they might be putting the blame on somebody else or trying to lessen the charges the evidence so the punishment isn't as severe you know police can be dodgy at times so there's no harm in thinking and questioning you can leave your thoughts down below what you think because I'm sure there are you know additional bullet points which highlight how the police have handled things and treated certain people both family and suspects if you know of any additional points like what I've mentioned 
to reinforce or to counter debunk feel free to do so in the chat and the comment section down below okay as said the only other bullet point i had on was could the police be involved with the drug trade you know people said about the meth labs distribution of drugs drug dealing transporting them across places you know um robert avales was an example who got apprehended who was done for possession of methamphetamine i think and there were some other people in the past as well um, previous months so makes you think you know it's happened before it's happened you know other times in the news of different areas so who's say it's any different here if the place is fairly known for you know making drugs dealing and creating them maybe the police do have a role in it some way because they can benefit themselves financially in some way they get a cut of the profits maybe in return turning a blind eye so the criminals don't get arrested i mean it's kind of a ghost town area so there's not too much police presence box elder county i don't know what the actual size of that department is but it's not like massive compared to other states and areas so maybe that's why they're able to get away with it the way they do you know what i'm saying so yeah that was the first key question are they corrupt let me know your thoughts the next one the next key question is what's the past history like with box elder county how they deal with cases whether it be other missing people cases or you know trying to get justice with other crimes that have gone on it could be a murder it could be uh, being physically mentally psychologically uh, hurt in some way i don't know if youtube will censor what i say so that's why i'm wording it like that okay that's what you gotta ask ask yourselves if you know or if you've had an experience with box elder county feel free to leave your story down below in the comment section if you want to it might highlight certain things with the country I'm in, I probably can't access certain records. I know people say VPN, this and that. Well, maybe in time, but, you know, practically speaking on a normal scale, you know, because I've been in a different country, you, I can't check myself. So that's why I'm putting this question out there. Why, if you know the past case history with Box Elder County, are there positive reviews or mostly negative? You know, if they've been reviewed badly in the past, comments have been made about how Box Elder County have dealt with things, their procedures, lack of professionalism. If there are patterns like that which overlap in similarities with what Candice Cooley has said within the Dylan Rounds case, then it makes you think, you know, the the used to doing this, so they must be corrupt, they must be dodgy in some way, like they either don't care overall for anyone, or you know, they might be working for other people the wrong side who get caught up in all of these different cases. You never know. So I don't know if there's if there's a way of doing it. Could be the Facebook page, maybe, or there might be a website which might have comments, replies. Maybe you just have to literally directly ask people who have used Box Elder County services. I mean, it's just worth checking. If, if it's one of those things where Box Elder County have handled situations, you know, normal, okay, in the past, you could put the argument forward, maybe this is just a blip, a one-off. It's gone wrong. It's not gone well. Some people could throw in the excuse or point and say, well, it might be because they're stretched, the services. They're assigned to too many cases at once, so they can't put in the same level of care, effort and detail as if they were dealing with just one case. 
So there is that, okay? Not completely dismissing it. But, you know, I guess it depends how big the department is. If there's enough people, then different ones could be assigned to different cases. But if it's just a small handful and they've got to do multiple things at once, then maybe that's why on this one occasion, which might require more effort and is a bit more deeper and complex, it's kind of gone wrong because they're still focusing on other stuff. But then it makes you think if that was the case, then what, what, like, what's the progression in the other cases? How are they going? You know, other people, other people who are suffering, who have had encountered going through a bad thing right now, who are in the presence of Box Elder County. How's it going for you? Um, has your case or whatever been solved? Have you received justice? Have you been treated reasonably well? Have you received enough information and contact with them? Or has it been lacking? If so, feel free to leave your thoughts down below. And, you know, if more people can, like, reveal things if possible, or if they want to, then maybe it could highlight the overall presence of Box Elder County in their overall reputation. You know what I'm saying? And tying it in with reputation, the next question is, a Box Elder County refusing to step down out of sheer desperation, maybe. You might be wondering, well, why? Desperation in clawing back any bit of reputation. You know, they don't want to be viewed or ranked as underwhelming, underperforming, because they might get punished. They might get fired. New people might be, uh, might replace the current detectives, officers, people that work in the department. I mean, I'm not an expert with this stuff, but, you know, they're not doing the job overall in that area. They might get taken over in some way, whether it be by a different department or just new people coming in. You know, maybe some of you are more experts on that, so you can leave your thoughts, add to it or counter, but... You know, when things start going wrong in general, sometimes it's hard to know when it's time to stop. You know, you tried once, didn't work. You tried again, didn't work. But you keep on doing it until it goes right. And sometimes you just need to walk away. And when it comes to the police, even if they are aware of their incompetence, maybe they're thinking, yeah, but if we just step down now, it's not going to make us look any better. You know, if we're able to resist, hold on, and somehow find a way to solve the case, then maybe we can get back that respect, which we need, which we want. That could be going through their mindset. So their stubbornness, their awkwardness, is mainly because they know they've messed up, and they need to try and fix things one way of looking at it, okay? Is there a possibility that they might want reward money? Some people are gonna jump in right now and say, what the fuck are you on about? Well, I just want to put one question across and it's just a very basic amateur question, okay? So don't resist, don't get your pants in a twist. This is just a simple question which requires a simple answer, okay? I'm wording it like that because I know people don't, some people don't understand my use of language and wording. So hopefully this is clear. So, as you see with the FBI, such as on the website, most wanted individuals, there might be a reward, $5 million, if you have information which leads to the arrest of that person, you get that reward money makes sense. General public could put up a reward such as Candice Cooley, $100,000 for finding Dylan Rounds. That makes sense. What happens if the police detectives were mainly responsible for finding Dylan? Who receives that reward money? Do the police or not because they are their authority? 
they won't receive the money. Uh, so the money just is retracted and put back into Candice or whoever's bank account. Is that how it works? Or do the police get the reward money because they did find Dylan? So they should get the reward money. Let me know, okay? It's just um, one of those questions which never really thought of before, okay? Just thought it was just worth mentioning. So yeah, that's it for the desperation part. I mean, you could tie that back with the corruptness, intertwine those two questions together. Corruptness through desperation. Desperation in a way to benefit from something. Corrupt in behaviour and handling of the case due to desperation of trying to prolong, drag things out, gatekeep the investigation to try and ensure that certain people get away with it and don't pay the price when they should because there are some kind of ongoing or previous cooperation in the past. Maybe the police, Ellie, don't want certain truths to be revealed because then it will drop them in on it as well and they could get in trouble too. So you can see how things can kind of tie together. So moving on to the next key question, what do other police departments think of how Box Elder County have handled stuff within the case? That can also apply to independent detectives, private investigators, former retired police officers and detectives. What do you all think about the way it's gone? How an official police department have just been unprofessional in handling the case and the lack of progression made. Is it normal? Is this what normally happens? Are there reasons to explain and excuse their actions? Maybe if police are watching right now or former police people, feel free to leave your own thoughts. Is it normal? Is there something else going on? Did you experience it yourself? Did you witness it in the past when working with a certain department? You know, it's just worth worth asking because, you know, you only know so much when you're on the outside. If you are if you are in the inside, then you might know more of what's going on and you might be more understanding of the situation, even if it might seem pretty bad. There might be a genuine reason to why things have happened like this. You know, like with the processing and understanding information in the case as a whole, when it comes to general public viewer or someone covering it on YouTube or a certain platform, you might only be able to say so much, talk about and cover so much because you don't have all the evidence, you don't have all the information and you're not expected to because you're not directly caught up within the case. You're not like a family member. So, you know, there's different ways of looking around it. But I guess in this situation, even with family members and friends not receiving information immediately, not being told about sense stuff, then it, and being treated like the general public, it seems like why, why is people being isolated? You know, why are the police doing that? So you could ask yourself, is it normal for police to isolate people when it comes to solving a case? And finally, moving on to the last question slash angle to cover, and that is, are there legitimate reasons to why Box Elder County have handled things the way they have done? Is there a genuine reason? Okay. Got some little bullet points down below, which I'll note off. Okay. Are they maintaining control of the case? but also not giving out much information to the family members and the public because they're onto something. They're determined to follow it through. New leads, ongoing ties. They don't want to step down now. They've made far too much progress behind the scenes. They're onto something big. They've located important evidence which could lead to a successful conviction 
of a suspect. They might have rough whereabouts of Dylan, but in order to follow through with that successfully, they need to be patient and hold on. They need to cooperate and communicate with others in between. That's one way of looking at it, you know. I know previously family members themselves have stated they couldn't say certain things, such as the key fob, even though the Ellie messed up. Candice was specifically told to keep quiet, and if any points were raised or questioned, she had to shut him down and act like, no, nope, no progression has been made there, nothing's been found, nothing's been returned, because it could compromise the case. And I guess that could apply to other areas at points in times, like with previously, before the key fob situation came about and was talked about publicly, in a previous East Idaho News Channel interview, I think it might have been the second one, Candice mentioned how at the time at Dylan's grain shed, or at least on the land, the police have found new stuff, progression has been made, bits of evidence, but it can't be discussed or mentioned at this moment in time. Fast forward to the last and latest East Idaho News Channel interview talking about the police in a negative way and everything that's gone down. Candice also said that there's been new developments with Jim Brenner, also known as James Brenner, but can't reveal anything at this moment in time. So that procedure might be the case, but in terms of the iceberg effect, on the surface, that general common sense idea of not everything can be shared with the general public. You go one below that, the midsection, let's say, family members also being aware of the tip of the iceberg, but, you know, touching the waters a little, receiving some information the general public wouldn't receive. Certain communication at times, general public wouldn't be in touch with. So they get the feel of the water, some of the stuff that goes on within the case. But then you've got the bit where it's submerged in the water, a bit murky, a bit dark, can't quite see what's going on. But the people who are involved, such as um, the Ellie, they're underneath that water, underground, finding information, tying stuff together. But that can't be brought to the surface, to the public yet, because it would flip that iceberg upside down and it would just, it just would ruin the case. It might invalidate evidence and information and all that time wasted. It might lead to the suspects not being convicted successfully. So that's why there's a procedure. And if there is evidence, there are ongoing things that might link to the determination and awkwardness of why Boxelder County don't want to step down because they want to finish what they started. It might also be a bit of competitiveness, you know, if they've worked on it up to now, put a fair bit of effort and time in, despite them being criticised for how they have, have acted, they might think, oh, we don't want some other department stepping in and getting all the glory now, do we? We want to be the ones that solve it, that are successful. We don't want rival competition or other people from different states or, like, counties coming in because then that will just ruin it you know okay you've got elko county you know who've assisted but box elder county may be the ones that just want to have all the focus and attention on them whether it be for narcissistic reasons for genuine reasons such as progression being made you know what i'm saying you can leave your thoughts down below what you think about that okay is there anything else yeah and it can tie on with the whole idea of not revealing certain information, but this could be a bit of a deeper reason. Okay, so you ready for this one? The reason why there might be 
and this is directly to do with how they've acted within the case overall and how they've treated the family members such as the parents Candy, Cooley and Justin Rounds. The lack of communication and transparency of investigations going underway and information being shared such as evidence too is because maybe the LE are suspicious of the family or certain family members hence why they separated both parents when it came to giving out information to them they wanted to see how the parents respond to it if they're in the same room there might be a level of suppression a lack of naturalness maybe because both when together have an understanding of how to act what to do and what not to do but when separated that what do you call it that coherentness that sync is not there because they're separated so if they act different it might show more and then the police might become more suspicious of that if they're separated that might have been done as an experiment to see who is the controlling one who is the manipulative one who has secrets to hide you never know whereas if they're both together in a room being talked to then that could lead to i don't know a controlling presence ensuring that the other person doesn't slip up whereas by separating them telling them information as created by candy Cooley, it left them doubting themselves and slipping up and questioning and getting confused maybe it was a plan all along by the le to see who confesses or reveals something even if it's the tiniest bit of information and you know a general thing if you don't trust someone you're not going to tell them your secrets are you when it comes to more serious situations with like authority and people in charge and they come across someone who might be a suspect you gotta handle them a certain way you know it's like with if you believe somebody is the killer in the case you're not going to go up and say okay just because you're a family member and you're suffering and you need to know what happened to your son to uh, your daughter or whatever we're going to tell you exactly what's happened we found evidence which ties a certain individual of this age matching that description which just so happens to be you as being the main suspect and we found fingerprints as well and that's why we're telling you all this information so you know so that means you can find an excuse or a way out or run away and escape so then a conviction can't be done and then there's no justice said by no one that's not how they're going to be if they know someone is suspicious or they have a feeling they're not going to start revealing all this information about the progression in the case if they believe that evidence and those leads are tied to that family member because then it, it just falls through so that could explain why they're like oh not much has gone on here oh we're still ongoing oh that still needs to be sent to the labs oh yeah yeah to kind of like throw them off the family you never know it's just another way of looking at it okay so you can leave your thoughts down below as said this isn't all directly coming from my mouth or my opinion i'm just trying to give different points of views and different questions and thoughts in general to start a discussion because there might be someone or a group that might know of things that can help clear stuff up debunk add reinforce to something you never know it can happen um as i said i don't think people seem to understand uh, well not everyone um just some here and there don't seem to understand the language i use like with a previous video i can't remember which one it was now i don't know if it was to do with the chop shop or another one I wasn't saying this is what I think I was basically wording it as this is what other people would think and suggest you know what I'm saying 
And the only reason why it's coming from my mouth is because I'm the only one stood here or sat down in this room, okay? So it's just relaying what other people have said. Just like when it comes to relaying information as you've seen that process. So hopefully that makes more sense, okay? So as I said, that's it for now. If you have additional points, questions or anything like that, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.